Right, so when we talk about today's NASA, these two bases, there's a few things we should really kind of knock on and get under our hats straight away. First and foremost, of course, these are two NASA's that are very, very similar indeed. And regardless of which one of these two you go for, you are going to get a very, very good standard class two bay NAS. Neither the 251B or the 251D were ever designed to be the tippity top of the two bay pyramid. They really weren't. They are designed to give you the best possible NAS experience on a standard level, arriving with a great price point on both of them, although there is a difference between them, and giving you the a kind of a, an entry point into the world of NAS without feeling you're going to compromise. Both of them can be upgraded in a number of ways, ranging from PCIe to memory upgrades, and both can be expanded with several ways of expanding storage with those NAS expansions from QNAP, the TR002 and the TR004. Both of them arrive with support of the Surveillance Station and QVR Pro application for surveillance needs, with loads of camera licenses included. Both of them support Linux Station, support QMaggie for your fo photo um, categorization and AI um, assisted cataloging. Both of them have got multimedia support with Photo Station, Music Station and Video Station, as well as supporting Plex Media Server to different degrees. Both of them support Hybrid Backup Sync 3, which allows you to synchronize a myriad of different third and third party, um, third and first party platforms, be they other NASes via real-time remote replication, USB backups, or cloud services such as Amazon S3, Dropbox, Google Drive, and more. And with new applications coming into the mix this year, with the likes of Virtual JBrod and Hybrid Mount, there are just so many ways in which home and business users can take advantage of a network attached storage device. And both of these two give you a great amount of support. However, what we want to talk about today is which one of these two deserves your data. Because although they're both very, very good, there are arguments for buying both. You know, spoiler alert, at the end of the video, I am going to tell you that I do genuinely believe the TS251D is the better purchase here. One of the main reasons for that is because all the hardware inside is far more modern. They've made certain changes within this chassis and with regard to the choices of hardware to maintain that price point but still give you more than what is found in the 251B. That said, the 251B is currently going to be available at a much better price because of a release of a new device. And for those of you that have already purchased the 251B, do not fret, it is still a great bloody two-bay NAS. It was easily in my favourite two-bay NASs of last year and still continues to be a very, very well-performing um, NAS. But let's talk about these two devices and what dip makes them different. First and foremost, that price. As mentioned, the 251B is going to be available at a better price point, if not already, then very soon indeed. So it may be a good time to get yourself a bargain. But the 251D just gives you more in terms of longevity. It gives you more in terms of bang for your buck. And consequently, you may seem like you're spending a lot more, but really you're getting more for your money, and you have to bear that in mind. Because although they both run the same software, QNAP's QTS 4.4.1 software, and all of those apps, be they beta, first party, or third party, they just run better, and you'll get more out of them on the 251D. Both of these arrive with two years of manufacturer's warranty, and both of them can have that warranty extended by up to five years by the purchase of warranty extensions. But this device still gives you more in terms of long-term upgradability. Look at the hardware inside. The 251B arrives with a uh, Intel Celeron J3355. That's one point, uh, sorry, a 2.0 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.5 gigahertz. Whereas the um, 251D arrives with another Celeron CPU, but it's the J4005, another dual-core CPU, sure. But it can be burst from 2.0 to 2.7 gigahertz in clock speed. So again, a better clock speed and a more modern and efficient CPU inside the 251D with a higher score on CPU benchmark as well to bear in mind, which means you can get more done with this processor. You can have more users more intense operations and it will perform better of the two of them as a plex media server nas and in surveillance with more cameras being utilized simultaneously on the 251d 
than on a 251B. Even in terms of memory, although both of them support up to 8 gig of memory, they both arrive with a different pathway to it. The B arrives with support of DDR3 memory. That's 18 um, 1,866 megahertz memory arriving with either 2 gig, 4 gig, uh, or up to a maximum 8 gig. Whereas the 251D arrives with DDR4 support at 2,133 megahertz, and that is 2, 4, and 8 gigabytes available as well. Both of which can unofficially be upgraded to 16 gig, but we're not going to talk about that because that will super invalidate your warranty more, more than certainly. But that extra memory, a better, that you know, more efficient memory at a higher frequency is just going to equal better software results. And although, like for like, this uh, uh, the 251D utilizes more power while in operation, it's so small it makes as little as to no difference. And with noise generated being almost identical, you can't really give it any kind of you know negative on that. Now. They both support the latest hard drives, the very latest Seagate drives, the Seagate Iron Wolf NAS drives and WD Red drives up to the value of 14 and 16 terabytes, which is always great to hear. So you've got a potential 32 terabytes of raw storage ready to be raided as needed. Um, in terms of connectivity, although both of them arrive with support um, of um, 1 GBE LAN connectivity, both of them can be upgraded via a PCIe uh, card, uh, improved NIC network interface card, to 2.5 GBE, 5 GBE, and 10 GBE as needed. Both of them support those great QM2 cards. But with regards to the PCIe slot, as I've already kind of touched on, the PCIe connector is improved on the newer device. With PCIe Gen 2 times 2 one of the smallest connections you can get for PCIe, on the 251B, still allowing you to upgrade it to 10GB in some of those cards, but the 251D arrives with uh, PCIe Gen 2 times 4 which is a wider connector and will allow you bigger and better cards to be installed inside this device, which is something you're going to look forward to later down the line. Also, they both arrive for support of HDMI and HD Station from QNAP, which means that you can run applications via its own parallel graphical user interface over HDMI. Do check out my hardware reviews to hear more about that. But the HDMI port is better on the new one at 60 frames per second 4K and 1080p. And with the older generation NAS running 1080p at 60 frames per second but 4K at 30. So better performance as a visual outlet on this device. And if you are going to take advantage of one of these devices for surveillance and intend to run lots of cameras at once with a standalone keyboard video um, mouse setup, a KVM standalone surveillance solution, then you're going to see better results with the 251D. Now, apart from that, everything else is pretty much the same. They've got the same USB port that can be used for peripheral devices, external storage and more, and both of them support external NAS expansions, but you're just going to get better results through most things on the D. And although it's got a higher price tag, you just get more for your money. So, that answers the question, which one do I think deserves your data more? I do think the D. Is it worth upgrading? Well, depends your position. If you own the 251B already, don't upgrade. You've already got a solid NAS there that, although it is a year old, is still a great little device. And even if you see it at a cheap price, still go for it anyway, because trust me, it is a NAS to be reckoned with. Also, if you are looking to buy a brand new NAS, and you're been running something more than three or four years old, like the TS251 Plus or older, then maybe this is the one to go for between the two of them because it just gives you a great deal more of expandability with the HDMI port or the PCIe upgrade ability and those improved internal specifications. Now, where we go from here from QNAP, well, that's really up to them, of course, isn't it? Because although this is their latest release for 2020, we still don't know if we're going to see upgrades to the B and the BE series, as well as the 73 series, the 72 series, and more. All of these NASs, we are seeing series now that are two to two and a half years old, and we really want to see what comes next. But if this is a taste of things to come, this is fine by me, as long as they upgrade those LAN ports a little bit, but that's a story for another day. Ultimately, if you are looking for a brand new standard 2-bay NAS, this is the score to beat right now, and I will be doing a comparison with the Synology DS218 Plus shortly. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful, 
click like. It really helps me make these videos and understand what exactly you, the audience, want. If you want to learn more about this device and all the other stuff around NAS, do subscribe. And to learn more, go to the link in the description to NAS Compare or to Span.com. I'll see you next time.